Going beyond superficial tie-ups, a call for the National Skin Research Centre to deepen industry collaboration and come up with commercially viable solutions. Senior Minister of Trade and Industry Lo Yen Ling says this is crucial in driving the next lap of growth for the Skin Research Institute of Singapore, or SRIS. Now, she was speaking at an event celebrating a decade of collaboration among clinicians, biologists and engineers to improve skin health. Some tech on display include this imaging technology, which can detect some skin cancers without the need for biopsy. Others include the world's first patch that reduces scar formation after surgery. And these are examples of how Ms. Lo says Singapore can contribute significantly to improving dermatological research globally. Singapore, for example, is really well positioned to lead in the Asian specific skin research due to our multiracial population, which represents the major Asian ethnic groups. And this diversity provides a very valuable opportunity for Sri's to be a leader in researching skin conditions that's prevalent in Asian population, which have been underrepresented in global thermatological studies. And for more, we're now joined by Professor Stephen Thung. He is Deputy Director and Senior Consultant at the National Skin Centre and also Chief Dermatologist of the Skin Research Institute of Singapore. Professor Thung, welcome to the studio. Um, first Good. of all, you know, share with us some of the top skin challenges that Singaporeans face and why have they become more common over the years? Certainly. In the National Skin Centre, we see roughly about 1,000 patients a day. Mm. The top three conditions that we see are mainly eczema, acne, and surprisingly, pigmentary disorders. Now, eczema is common in Singapore. Up to 25% of our children has it. And it can be graded by both genetics as well as environment. We know the hot, yeah. uh, humid environment is not very good for eczema, especially it causes a lot of house stars might, and a lot of house stars might irritate the skin. Mm. And of course, the recent uh, hot weather with uh, direct UV rays on the skin caused increased incidence of skin aging and pigmentation. So these numbers, they have increased over the years. You have seen a, a, a spike in the numbers. Certainly. The eczema um, rates have roughly been about the same, but the amount of patients suffering for with severe eczema yeah. has gone up. Mm. And, and who are these uh, patients specifically? Are they young children, adults? Well, eczema affects a whole wide range of uh, mm. patients. Mm. We see young kids as young as uh, one year old, five years old, suffering from severe eczema. Elderly, 70, 80 years old, they can get very bad eczema too. So it's irres irrespective of age. Okay, so you earlier talked about the weather, climate genes. These are factors contributing to these skin conditions. What about diet? Is that a factor as well? Certainly, diet plays a big role. Okay. I always mm. uh, think about diet and acne, right? We do know that if you take a food that is high in glycemic index, yeah. it can cause an aggression acne. We know that obesity worsens eczema. In fact, if you look at patients with bad eczema, generally the amount of fat subcutaneous layer we've found out affects the skin barrier and it causes worsening of eczema. So diet plays a big role in skin conditions. Are there any uh, certain conditions that perhaps afflict some ethnic groups over the other? Let's take the case of eczema again. In a mm. recent study that we did, it was interesting to find that uh, while the eczema rates are about the same, um, certain races suffer from more severe eczema. Okay. So, for example, our Malay and Indian uh, counterparts tend to get more severe eczema as compared to the Chinese. We have not understood why is it so, but we are in the midst of trying to find out is it because of the diet or because of the genes. We, we don't know at this point in time. Where are we from trying to find the truth to, to this? I think we are uh, quite some way. Right? We've just gotten a, a good grant for us to study eczema. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do a longitudinal study of all these patients, exactly trying to understand what are the factors that cause them to get severe eczema. And more importantly, how can we prevent them from getting to that severe eczema state? I mean, when it comes to this kind of research, right, who are we learning from? What sort of case studies can we draw upon? 
Generally, most of research is done in US, in UK, in the Western population. So we can understand their research methodology and try to bring it to Singapore. Mm. But their results are quite different from Asian population. Yeah. We have found that the genes of eczema for Asian is quite different from, uh, from the UK genes. And we also know that the aging uh, of the Western population is quite different from our Asian counterparts. So while we can bring in their research methodology, our results will be totally different and we'll use those results to drive the care we want to give for our patients. Is that the reason why existing treatment options in the market, perhaps some people can say that they are less effective for Asians? Certainly, we also know that uh, while we found certain drugs to be very, very effective for the Western population, mm. it might not be so for our Asian population. And that's partly because our genes' signatures are different. Okay. Our, the way the disease goes about is different. Mm. Our diet is different. Our cultural practice is different. All this is a holistic Our climate is very, very and different as right. well. <laughs> you are perfectly right. Our climate is very different. Yeah. Okay. You know, we've heard a little bit from the story earlier about the, some of the new up-and-coming tech tech and research by the Institute. Uh, some examples that we saw include the 3D skin imaging technology. Uh, share with us how these tools have been effective for your patients. Certainly right now, if you come to the National, National Skin Centre, mm. if you have, suspect you have a skin cancer, we don't cut out your skin cancer anymore. With an imaging device, we are able to diagnose almost immediately. We are the first in the world actually to map out skin cancer in three dimensions enabling our surgeons to see exactly how deep, how wide it is, so that we can precisely cut the uh, skin cancer for patients. Mm. So it's reduced uh, relapse rate and reduced scarring. So that's in the area of imaging. What's very exciting is in the area of chronic wounds, uh, part of the results from the Skin Research Institute enable us to reduce amputations by almost two-thirds in Tantok Singh Hospital. Great. And mm -hmm. that's really important because amputation is one of the most severe conditions of diabetic foot. And once patients get their foot amputated, their quality of life just drops. Professor Feng, thank you so much for coming in to speak with us about this. We appreciate your insights. That was Professor Stephen Tung sharing those insights on skin research in Singapore.